Yeah, so in this talk, lightning talk, we'll cover how you could get 100% visibility into your services communication, the flow of data between your services on Kubernetes. I'll first go through why you would want to monitor the flow between your services, then go through an example of how you could get this data, uh, cover technology that would allow you to get this efficiently, run through an example cluster of how this data looks like, and briefly touch on how to productionize it, what are the challenges. So why would you even want to get flow monitoring data? Well, with flow data, you can get a complete picture of your application architecture. Do I have a service-to-service -service dependency that I don't know about or that is undesirable? Is there a dependency between availability zones that could hurt the high availability strategy? Is there a dependency between environments, for example, production and staging? You'd be surprised. Uh, second, monitoring health. It's easy to introduce bugs, configuration errors, uh, and incompatibilities. Um, for each service that you're running, for the upstream services, which interaction is unhealthy? How can you find that? Which versions are affected? Which services are affected in which availability zones? And finally, in the public cloud, communication between availability zones and regions is expensive. How do you monitor which services are using this expensive resource so you can optimize? Let's go through an example of how you could uh, get this flow data. Uh, so let's say you have a pod A wants to communicate to a service X, and X is backed by a pod B. Uh, in the default implementation using IP tables, uh, Cube Proxy configures IP tables with this mapping of X to B. So A opens a socket to X, then IP tables maps, uh, translates X's address to B's address, so that B uh, sees the connection as if it arrives directly from A. Uh, to get this flow data, you use three data sources. Uh, from the Kubernetes API, you can get the names of the pods and their IP addresses. From the socket subsystem in the kernel, here using the SS tool, you can get uh, socket information here, A to X, and also metadata on the socket. So uh, throughput, RX and TX, packet drops, round trip times. From IP tables, you can get this mapping. Here, A to X is mapped to A to B. Uh, so using these three data sources, Kubernetes API, socket subsystem, and IP tables, you can get this flow data. How do you get it efficiently? Well, um, BPF or eBPF has been around in the Linux kernel in, in the form that I'm talking about since 3.18. Uh, it allows user space programs to run code snippets on different kernel events. And so, for example, you can get, instead of going through all the sockets in the kernel, you can get just streaming updates of what changed. So it's much more efficient. And you also have access to much more data from the kernel. Uh, there are a lot of safety uh, mechanisms for BPF. Uh, for example, the BPF has an in-kernel verifier that ensures that programs cannot access invalid memory. And in the context of this talk, all of the programs re, uh, run in read-only context, so they cannot garble in-kernel data structures. Uh, programs are also just-in-time compiled to very efficient machine code, so this is super fast. Uh, all in all, uh, using DBPF, it's possible to get 100% coverage of all the flows in your cluster directly from the operating system without application changes and with extremely low overhead, so that's a big win. Let me give you a tour of our, one of our staging environments. Uh, here you can see uh, the Kubernetes nodes and some of the health checks that Kubelet performs to containers in the cluster. Here you can see out of cluster traffic hitting our APIs and our front end. Uh, and here you can see the flow analysis server and Prometheus scraping it. Uh, I mentioned collecting throughput, packet drops, and round trip time. Uh, by analyzing the time series data, it's possible to establish baselines of what the behavior should look like so the system could alert you on changes on anomalies. Uh, there are several challenges in getting such a system into production. I don't have much time, so I'll cover those briefly. Um, first, EBPF is extremely efficient, but you could shoot yourself in the foot with it, so you need to be careful uh, using it well. Um, network overhead, um, if you ship a lot of data out, you make sure that you do this efficiently, so compress. There are also security implication. You want the system to be real time so you can alert on it, but, I mean, um, and uh, Prometheus has cardinality issues you need to tackle and more and more and more. 
Um, my contact details are in the bottom, so if you find this interesting, please reach out. <laughs>